Creating custom select boxes like these used to require a lot of JavaScript, time, third-party code, and so on. But what if I told you every single one of these select boxes you're seeing is built directly using only HTML and CSS? That's because there's a brand new browser specification coming through that allows you to create entirely custom select boxes using just HTML and CSS, and it's incredibly powerful and flexible. Honestly, it's something I never thought I would see in the browser. In this video, I'm going to go through what this new specification looks like, what you can expect, and when you can start using it. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to get started with these custom select elements, as you can see over here, this is the custom select element that I've created, and this is the code that you need to do it. It's honestly not that much code. So if we take a look at the HTML, it's rather straightforward. We create a select element just like we normally would, but the main difference is that now inside of our options, instead of just giving them a specific actual value inside of here of like USA, we're now giving it HTML that it can actually render out. And we have this special custom HTML element called selected content. This is a built-in HTML element built into the browser with this new select specification, which just gives you the HTML inside of whatever your selected option is. So if I select United States, it's going to give me the options right here, all that HTML directly inside of United States. So this is all we need to do to create this custom select. Really, it's just create a bunch of options with some HTML and put this selected content inside of here. And I can even add stuff before this. For example, you can see that shows up beforehand if I want. So it's entirely up to you how you customize what this looks like. Now, the more interesting part comes into the CSS. So if we look at the CSS, it's really not that complicated. First of all, we have a select as well as this picker select. So what this does, this select tag right here, we're changing the appearance to base select. All that means is that we're taking the normal browser-based styling for select element and we're converting it to our own custom HTML select. So if I remove this and I just give this quick save, you can see it just renders a normal HTML select element. So the nice thing about this is everything gracefully falls back. So if a browser doesn't support this or if you're not using this appearance tag, everything just works like a normal select element. But as soon as we add this, what it does is it replaces the browser's built-in styles and it replaces them with their own custom styles. To kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, here are two select elements. This is just a boilerplate basic select element. And this one over here is the base style. So like the new styles of what this select element looks like if you just change the appearance and nothing else. Now, the second part here is this picker section. Essentially, when you have your select box open, this bottom section, the drop down, that is considered the picker. So essentially, I'm saying I want to change what that drop down looks like to also have it be based on my new select option styling. Now, if we look at our actual important styles here, we have this selected content and option style. All that's doing is it's styling what my options look like and what the selected content up here looks like. So I'm just making it display flex with a gap between them so that I have a little bit of space between my different elements. On each of my options, I'm giving them a little bit of extra vertical padding. My country name, I'm changing the style on slightly. I'm adding in this flag image and giving it a specific width and height. And then finally here, I have this option check mark. If I remove this, by default, all of these different selects will have a check mark on the left-hand side for accessibility purposes. But most of the time, you probably don't want that. So I'm actually disabling that by default just to remove that default checkbox from these marks. Now, instead, I'm replacing that with this option checked. So whichever one of these options is currently selected, it's going to have this nice light blue background. As you can see, as I change, it gets that nice light blue background between all of them. Now, this right here is pretty much the most basic version of how you do this select. All you do is you create your select with all your HTML you want. You make sure you use this selected content HTML tag, and then you want to make sure you change the appearance to be base select for both the dropdown as well as the select element. And from there, you can just style things however you want. That's essentially how all these different selects that are shown in the intro of this video happen. For example, this select right here is the exact same thing. We just have our custom dropdown and we're just changing around what everything looks like. Same thing here for this currency selector. And then finally, for this selector right here, again, we're just changing around what everything looks like. Now, this is a specification that's very well detailed inside of this blog right here. I'll scroll to the top here. This is the request for developer feedback on the customizable select on the Chrome for dev blog. I'll link this in the description. One thing to note about this blog in particular is it is slightly out of date. For example, if I scroll down to this section, which is the most important section telling you what each thing does. You'll notice here it's called selected option and option before. While as we looked at our code, you can see this is called selected content and this is option check mark. So there's a few things that are slightly out of date. What I would recommend doing at the very top of this blog article, they have a link here that brings you to the code pen collection. Click on that link and that's going to bring you to an updated version of all of these different code pens that have everything that I've showed you in this video. So that would be what I recommend. Also, if you want to use this feature currently, you need to do it inside of the Canary version of Chrome and enable the experimental web platform features. 
Now this feature is currently in stage two, which means that most likely there's not going to be a ton of changes to the API. But obviously, as you've seen, there have been some changes to the API from when I created this video to when that blog article was written. So there are some changes that could happen. But for the most part, it's probably going to be pretty similar to what I've shown you here. And again, the really nice thing about this is it has a graceful fallback. For example, if I open this inside of Google Chrome normally, you can see this is a normal Google Chrome instance. It doesn't support any of this fancy stuff. You can see it still works just like a normal select box. So the really nice thing is you can start using this immediately. And even if a browser doesn't support it, it's still going to show you the default select box. And then as soon as you get a browser that does support it, you're going to get all of these really extra fancy features. Now, if you enjoyed these more bleeding edge style videos where I cover the latest and greatest inside of CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, you're going to love the videos right over here. One of them talks about the anchor position and how it's absolutely amazing inside of CSS. It's my favorite thing coming to CSS. I highly recommend checking that out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.